Doctors say you never really know a guy. And so he crawls into your DMs like some slimy little slug and shoots his ill-timed and horribly aimed shot at you. It's one thing when it comes from some psycho lunatic who lives perpetually in their mom's basement while also being someone you never met and probably never will. But it's a whole nother demon when this son of a gun is a sleazy slimy clown from your own friend group. Here's the context for today's new installment of Outstanding Incel Romance Novels. Our protagonist here is a 23-year-old woman who had been introduced to a new character in the friend group, the Prince of Darkness himself, a true anti-hero of sorts, whose name we don't actually know. So we're just going to call him Ryan. He has always had a problem with our main girl who we'll refer to as Becca. The issue that he has with her is simply that she doesn't like to talk which has brought him to the most out-of-pocket, smooth brain conclusion no human with a functioning frontal lobe could possibly manufacture in their brain. You guys, I know you're excited to get this new chapter, the incel romance manga started, so let us go ahead and do exactly that. I'll be honest with you, I don't understand you, lol. She responds, what do you mean? I can get you. What's there to get? You're always so quiet, I don't know anything about you other than the fact that you like potatoes in the town of Salem, lol. Lamal. Well, I don't know, I don't have much to say, I guess. I mean, isn't this just the most perfect way to start off a conversation with somebody you don't even know that well? I don't understand you. I mean, it's a hook, I mean, you're definitely gonna grab their attention with that, right? If you had a dif difficult time getting somebody's attention, start off with that, and they're gonna you know, they're going to be curious and they might want to clear the air for you a little bit here. But let's see how this actually unfolds. I know the least about you. You never go out of your way to make conversation with me. You don't even make eye contact. Okay, does that bother you? No, I mean, somewhat, yeah. But it's normal human response. Can't blame me. Can I ask a blunt question? Oh, you already know that this is about to go somewhere south very quickly. When somebody asks... If they can ask a question, nine times out of ten, you, you can assume it's about to be something completely crazy that you would probably wish you had just said no to so you can move on with your life. But that's not going to be what happens here. So she responds with an affirmative, sure. Are you autistic? Well, just like that, everybody, um, the cat is out of the bag. The entire mood of this conversation has just shifted to straight lunacy. And uh, we're, on, we're along for the ride. No, are you? <laughs> I like how she just hits him with the Uno reverse immediately. Like, I think she probably already has some speculations about this guy's mental state. Maybe he's trying to, maybe she's thinking, like, maybe this guy's trying to see if he can, if he has somebody he can relate to. Like, oh, are you autistic? Or is this all you're asking me if I am? I mean, that's the only reason I think she would respond that way, right? Lol, no. So, what do you think about me? In what way? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good follow, like follow up question. In what way? Yeah, like what does that mean? What do you think about me? It kind of came out of the blue. Like, how do you go from asking someone, "Are you autistic?" to immediately, "So what do you think about me?" Like, well, honestly, I'd imagine they probably don't think too many great things about you because you're assuming they're having some sort of mental disorder. How about we talk about that first? But I mean, I guess this maybe this is just the natural progression of things. It's a simple question. What do you think about me? I mean, wait, wait to fucking elaborate, my friend. I'm sure she totally understands what you mean now. You really, really got that all figured out. I don't really think of you, so not sure how to answer that. Fair enough. Jesus. Okay, I'll try something else because you're too fucking smooth brain to understand a simple question. What part of what do you think about me do you not understand? Like, it's simple. Why do you never laugh at my jokes? Not that I'm trying to make you in particular laugh. Why is it so hard to make conversation with you? Why do you feel so entitled to have somebody laugh at your jokes? Are you a fucking comedian? Are you Kevin Hart? Are you fucking George Lopez? Are you fucking Gabriel Iglesias? But even then, they're not entitled to anybody's laugh. I mean, comedy is very subjective. Maybe your shitty-ass jokes just simply don't resonate with their sense of humor. I don't know why you think that you just deserve laughter because you said something shitty that you read online to somebody. I'm more of a listener. Don't take it personal, to be honest. I'm just shy, I guess. And that's a valid response. Not everybody is a very, extra, like, or particularly extroverted people, you know? Not everybody's going to be laughing and singing and joking around and stuff like that some people are just vibing like they're just there and they chilling that's who they are there's got to be a reason i'm better looking and more successful than 90 percent of the men you know so what's your type 
I want to get to know you. My type is a man who doesn't ask if I'm autistic. Yeah, <laughs> that's totally valid. That, that sends off so many red flags. Like when somebody you barely know is having a conversation with you and they ask you, are you autistic? Just think of the implications of that. Like that tells me like right from the get go, this person probably is extremely narcissistic. If they think that somebody doesn't agree with them or doesn't think the same way that they do, that they have to have some sort of mental illness, then clearly the person in question here probably has some sort of mental issue of their own. In this case, I'd imagine probably NPD. Can you blame me for assuming that? Yes, you're an idiot. Don't get me wrong, you're pretty, but I definitely consider the possibility you're autistic. Or definitely on the spectrum somewhere. Dude, what, are you some kind of psychologist? What gives you the authority to diagnose somebody of a mental illness just because of your intera interaction with them don't go the way that you think they would? Lol, what? Reflect on your words when you go to bed tonight. See ya. I love how blunt she was with that. Like, this, you can tell she's extremely mature and very comfortable with who she is. And, like, she's not really about to entertain this absolute fucking unhinged lunatic here. But this really just sets him off even more. Because he's not getting the validation that he needs. Because he's on some sort of crazy power trip. Wow. Wow. I think you're jealous. I spent the night with Daisy and, I don't know, Clarissa. And you went home alone. Yeah, just flex on me. Yeah, I spent time with these other girls. Like, fuck you. Don't worry. Nothing happened. We just watched Netflix in bed. No need to be jealous. God, is he really trying to pull out the jealousy card? Like, this woman isn't interested. You can't do this when there isn't any sort of intro. And also, this is a dumb strategy, no matter what the situation is. But especially when there's no interest in you whatsoever already in existence. How is this pulling the jealousy card? Like, she's just gonna be like, I okay, cool. Like, I don't care. Like, good for fucking Stacy and fucking Clarissa or the fuck. I just doesn't care. What's your problem? Is this some sort of trauma response? I just don't get it, Becca. I've known you since March 12th. And for whatever God knows what reason, you decided to treat me like complete shit. You hug Larissa and Stacy, but not me. You share a couch with Joe, but when I join, you get up and leave. Do you think I'm fucking stupid or blind or what? The fuck did I ever do to you? I'm pissed off because you're clueless and extremely oblivious to the point you don't appreciate a good thing when it's directly in your face. I just don't get it. Help me understand, Becca. If entitlement was a person, it would have to be him. He is literally one of the most en entitled r slash nice guys I've ever seen in my life. I like how he's just demanding that he be treated the same way as these other people, and he's clearly hasn't earned that sort of treatment from her. I think Becca is probably afraid of you. She probably doesn't like you, and for good reason. You're a narcissist, and you're crazy, and you don't understand that you're the problem. So of course she's not going to want to do any of these things with you. You're not making her want to. <laughs> Gosh. Help me. And, I, and again, and even to just be demanding this from somebody is a, a level of lunacy that I, I can barely even comprehend in my own little brain here. The especially just the help me understand. Like what reason does she have to do that? What makes you think that you have any sort of right to demand this sort of thing from her? You're a lunatic, my guy. I'm sorry. Are you fighting yourself right now? Am I involved in this argument? This is all about you, Becca. Stop acting so obtuse. You may not be autistic, but you sure act like you're into trains or some shit. <laughs> Lamau, why do you keep saying my name? Trains are cool. Yeah, he does keep using her name like they're cool or something. I like when she points that out. Like That is a really, really weird thing to do. It's almost like he's like talking to like his child or something it just i don't know if he thinks that using her name over and over again is like some kind of like demon witch magic or something like when you're trying to battle a demon you have to use his name to upset it and bring it out or something like is he trying to unleash her inner potential or something by using her name so that she, this is what's actually going on with me you've uh, you've unlocked me you've reached my inner power you know, like, I don't know what the fuck this guy thinks is going on here. And also, you're acting obtuse. I've never actually seen anybody say that to someone. It's such a weird thing to say. But I like how he finally, like, he's like, okay, I guess you're not autistic, but you act like you're into trains. I guess that's a common thing for people that have some sort of mental illness or something, like autism or something along those lines, that they have a fascination with certain things. So I guess that's why he's pointing out. I like how she just says, yeah, trains are cool. 
just messing with them right now. Just toying with them. And I respect that. Is there some unresolved childhood trauma I need to know about? What the fuck is your problem? Also, so even if there is some sort of childhood trauma that she has, right? Let's just play ball for a second. Again, why would you need to know about it? She is clearly not interested in opening up to you about anything. And she's probably, I imagine with every single message that you send, he is less and less and less inclined to want to tell you fucking anything. At this point, she's just farming you for content because she knows she's about to go and post this on Reddit somewhere and make fun of you. So all the people can throw tomatoes and laugh at your stupid ass. That's all that she is really thinking about at this moment, other than maybe like being a little bit afraid for her life because you seem like an unhinged fucking lunatic that might hurt somebody. But, you know, hopefully that's not the case. I can help you out if that's the case. Again, I know you haven't pulled out your license like are you trying to claim to be some kind of licensed psychologist or something because you're over here giving her diagnostics you're saying you can help her like i i'm, I'm assuming here that that's probably not the case at all so i don't even know why you would offer that but you have to let me take the first step and stop being so guarded all the damn time it's impossible to get through to you yeah she's probably guarded because she doesn't trust you and never will and doesn't want to Please, I know you hear it all the time, but you're very pretty. I like you when you're not acting like an autistic, frigid bitch, respectfully. March 12th, and I haven't proven myself enough to you yet. You've been single all this time. It's extremely suspicious, actually. Why would a girl like you be single? What are you hiding? I like, again, this is like such a common thing that comes up with these r slash nice guys motherfuckers, okay? Everything is the girl's fault. I'm perfect. I'm amazing. I was specially crafted by fucking God himself. Okay? Like, he fucking built me with his own fucking fingers. Every inch of me. I am perfect. Therefore, anything that is going wrong has to be your fault. It can't be mine. It is impossible. That's literally the logic that these freaking guys use. When you're not acting like an autistic, frigid bitch. I love that. Respectfully. You know, what, how does that make that respectful? How can you call someone an autistic rigid bitch three clearly negative fucking things they're insults in this case and then say respectfully what is wrong with you my man you need to you need help asap it's clearly you have some sort of undiagnosed issue i'm not a licensed psychologist but i think my ability to infer here might be just a little bit above yours also march 12th that was only like a couple months ago now it's been like two months dude how are you what do you mean you haven't proven yourself yet it's only been two months and clearly she just doesn't have any interest in you you're crazy and she probably is somebody who can easily read someone and probably tell eh, i don't like their vibe i don't understand what you want in all honesty i like how she just doesn't even really respond to any of his bullshit she's just like trying to get to the bottom of like what is going on like what is the bigger picture here like why are you doing this you know and then she responds to one of his messages and specifically says first step of blood which is a great question I'm hiding so much, dude. <laughs> she jokes with them. First step of our potential. I can make your life 10 times better than it is now. I'm so sure of that. I'd give you that. That's you in writing, lol. You're beautiful. Uh, fuck, what did I say her name was again? Uh, fucking... Becca, yeah, yeah, there we go. And I'm what you want in a guy, correct? Incorrect. Actually, you are wrong. I'm sorry. I love that. Just one powerful, juicy fucking word here. Just doesn't doesn't specifically acknowledge anything that he said, and just says, "Nope, you're wrong." All in one word. You know, you know what? Everything in that one word basically meant this. You're a delusional, fucking cuck, loser, incel bastard who shouldn't be in my DMs. You're wasting your fucking time, and you're a piece of shit, and I don't like you. That's what that incorrect actually meant. He responds, "You're joking. You're performing." You're putting on an act to teach me a lesson or something stupid, lol. <laughs> You're putting on an act to teach me a lesson. What on earth could this lesson possibly be to not be so self-absorbed and not thinking that you're the center of everybody's gosh darn universe? I mean, that'd be a pretty good lesson. But why would she need to perform to do that? I think it'd probably make the most sense to just be honest and call you out on your bullshit. And that would accomplish the same thing. Um, in the you're joking, you're performing. I, I still don't understand how this guy is still this level of delusional and so, so unaware of himself. 
that he still can't see that he's the problem. This is one of those one-sided ass conversations where this guy just keeps blowing her up non-stop with all of these primitive, aggressive messages and is getting just absolutely destroyed with one word and like one sentence responses. I don't for a second believe you, Becca. I don't have to date you just because you find me physically attractive. That's like consent 101. Believe what you want. Don't forget, I'm suspicious. <laughs> she's so mature. Like, I like she still like kind of messes with them. She still like kind of throws them a bone. That's because she finds this entertaining. And she's like, God, I can't wait to show this to my group and show everybody how much of an absolute unhinged fucking lunatic this guy is. Yeah, you are our because there's no way you're single. You either have a severe mental disorder or asexual. Like, he's still just trying to diagnose her because he just still, I know I've already said this, but he still just cannot recognize that he is the problem. So anyone who's not into you falls under that category. Lamau, interesting. I love so many things about you, Becca. How did you even go from that to that? You know, Peter's talking about how she's got severe mental disorders. She's asexual. She's got autism. You hate how she doesn't laugh at your jokes. You hate how she doesn't really talk to you. You hate how she feels like how you think think that she's cold around you compared to everybody else. But then the same time, you're like, I love so many things about you. Yeah, I love those titties. I love that face. I love them cheeks. I love them legs. I love the way that you fucking exist. That's pretty cool. I like that you're a woman. That's awesome. The really cool stuff. Like, I just love so many fucking things about you. That's some crazy. Why don't you love me back? I love you. Interesting. She responds with a, <laughs> a little emoji with a little monocle. Just, yeah, that's beautiful. It's absolutely cooking them with one more responses. I love so many things about you, Becca. Genuinely. I love you as a friend. And I love you as a person. I want to make you smile. What's your height, by the way? All my ex have been 5'9 plus, so taller than you. But you have gorgeous eyes and tasty lips for sure. You look healthy. You make me want to become a daddy. So this guy, he decided to just completely change up his approach. He, oh, he realized when he was young and like some girl or whatever was like mean to him and then his parents explained to him like, oh yeah, when people are mean to you, it means that they like you. And he's like, oh really? And he took that shit to heart. So every time he has a little crush on somebody, He's a dick at first. He's like, you know what? You know, he sits there conjuring this stuff up in his brain. Like, what can I say that sounds mean? That'll really get her attention. Oh, I know. I'm gonna call her autistic. That's smart. Yeah, she'll like that. Yeah, she'll like that. She'll know how much I'm into her. And then he tried that approach and he realized it wasn't working. So he decides, you know, abort mission. He's like, mayday, mayday. This is not working. I'm gonna change tactics. I'm gonna try the sweet approach. I'm gonna try the sweet approach. I'm gonna smother her. I'm gonna serenade her with sweet fucking nothings. Beautiful, poetic language. I love you as a friend. And I love you as a person. I wanna make you smile. Those gorgeous eyes. I don't care that you're not that tall. It doesn't matter when you got those tasty lips. I wanna become a daddy because of you. I'm gonna put a baby in you. Yeah, that should fucking work. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, yeah. Oh, that should definitely compliment. She looks healthy. People love to fucking hear that. Yeah, she's gonna be foaming at the mouth, wanting me so bad. Yeah, we're gonna see if that's how that turns out. Please don't block this number. It'll be a waste of time. I'd rather do this in person. But you're not exactly easy to find nowadays, lol. I saw you leave fucking whatever the fuck yesterday by chance. I would have come said hi, but was in a rush. You look cute, damn near gave me a heart attack. Was he stalking her? Now this sounds like a stalker message. Oh no, this is getting a little scary here. So he's saying he saw her leave like some, maybe a restaurant or something. I don't know, let's just say fucking Home Depot or something. Listen, there, there, there's a such thing as happy accidents and coincidences, but this doesn't sound like one of them. This sounds like a situation that may have been manufactured by him to run into her by chance be chicken out he knew he didn't want to seem too for too scary like this is some joe goldberg shit you guys seen that show you i love that show this is like when joe stalks back in the first season to that i think it was a party or something and she gets super super wasted and this whole the whole time joe's just following her right hoping for you know an opportunity to just run into her quote unquote and then she falls onto the train tracks and he rescues her. And he's like, and then she's like, wait, don't I know you from somewhere? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you came into that bookstore and you're looking at some fucking some books and shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. It's crazy, right? Like, this is such a weird coincidence and shit, dude. I totally wasn't stalking you and I totally did not fabricate the situation at all. 
wild, you know, small world, crazy, right? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much this in my head, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it really was just a happy coincidence. Yeah, her just looking cute, and maybe damn near gave him a heart attack. Imagine what happens if you guys actually got intimate. She kiss you, or is your fucking dick just gonna fly off? First, I sincerely apologize for accusing you of having autism and calling you bitchy, upright, frigid, etc. It was 100% wrong, and I see why this caused you to withdraw even further. I don't want to push you away. No fucking shit, Sherlock! Gosh, how many hours of mental self-reflection did it take to get you to this conclusion that anybody with a normal functioning brain would have gotten to a lot sooner? What a fucking dingus. On Tuesday, March 12th. Why do you remember the specific day? Well, he, like... I'm going to read this message before I even get to that. Like when he met her, this guy must have been just so infatuated, just the same way Joe and you was when he first met Beck. You know, I'm pretty sure he probably marked that on his fucking calendar, met fucking Beck at fucking the bookstore on this day, March 12th. Like, I think he must have done that, too. He probably went on his phone and was met fucking Becca at, on fucking March 12th, Tuesday. First met, I believe I didn't give you a strong enough impression you, I feel like you probably gave too strong an impression. Probably why she doesn't fucking like you. Even on that day, I sense that you didn't get to see who I am. If you actually know me, you'd be in love right away. And I'm not being arrogant when I say this. It's a simple truth. I don't have to brag. The stats speak for themselves. I'm facially attractive, tall, white. Wh <laughs> okay. What? Why do you have to point out that you're white? Is that like, does he think that not being white is like, unattractive and that is what the fuck a great job at menards very passionate about giving back to the community two months before we met i organized a 5k fundraiser for some fucking place i don't know it was a major success and that's the kind of person i am sometimes i may be a bit of a misunderstood asshole but deep down i'm a good guy trying to make the world a better place i'm in excellent shape i have a God, I have a large penis that made many women happy. I get the feeling you've been unimpressed with every penis you've come across so far, and that's understandable. Oh my god. I don't even know if I can take any more of this, of this fucking lunatic here. But now he's th he only thinks this is some kind of fucking job interview. He's trying, like, he he's applied to be this, be her fucking boyfriend or something. Now he's trying to really seal the deal with... This is like his cover letter where he just talks and talks and talks and inflate, inflates his own ego for fucking half an hour. Oh yeah, I'm so fucking great. I have a huge dick. Did I mention that? My dick is massive. I also sponsored um, a charity event for a 5k. Did I ma mention that I have a massive cock? Yeah, it's, it's not an important detail, but you know, sometimes I just like to bring it up in case it's relevant. Um, yeah, um, I know sometimes I come off as, you know, a little bit of a jerk face, you know, when I call people autistic and, you know, say that there has to be something wrong with them and I call them a frigid bitch. I do apologize for that. I am white and I am tall and I am attractive. Just want to make sure you understood that. Did I mention I have a huge dick? Matter of fact, thought of you being subjected to other mediocre to downright awful penises deeply disturbs me. Like, why? Why would you allow yourself to stoop to that level? What? A five inch willy? Four inches? That is not the size that befits a queen of your stature. A beautiful, gracious woman like you at least deserves 6.1 inches. You know, I'm absolutely hung. Like, I'm a fucking horse. Okay? I am sl slinging a sledgehammer like a fucking WWE superstar. You don't know what you're missing out, baby. But that's life in modern society. As long as you haven't slept with blah, 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 or blah, I'm fine, lol. You can do better than those. By the way, Chris is not good at hiding the fact he wants to fuck you. He's pathetic and so fucking desperate for your approval. God, is he talking about himself? I mean, I know he's not, but gosh, if he had a little bit of self-awareness, just a tiny bit of self-reflection like Mulan in that fucking mirror, then he would know that who he just described is actually him. Isn't that crazy? Like, I feel like you'd have, like, imposter syndrome or something after that. I just know you're so turned off by that. I bet your vagina turns to dust when he's near you. Oh, Lord. No, I'm pretty sure it's dust right now. It is about as fucking dusty as the Dust Bowl, my man. It's about as dry as the Sahara Desert when she's talking to you. 
I definitely find you as attractive as you find me. She never said that she finds you attractive. Why are you so convinced? At what point did she even begin to imply that she finds you fucking attractive? You are a loser. You are a lunatic. You're fucking sipping crazy juice. You just blew in from fucking moron town. Golly, my friend. And you're 5'4", correct? I typically date taller women, but make exceptions, haha. <laughs> I do want tall sons though, so hope you don't mind if I use you for pleasure as a wife, eh, and breed with the tall females to secure the genetic lineage. What? Dude, how did you even come up with this? You can't be serious. Like, at this point, I almost want to believe that this is Kappa Juice. Because I don't think any real functioning human is going to say this sort of crazy lunatic stuff to another real functioning human. What is wrong with you? Why are you over here talking about like, oh, you're actually maybe not good enough for me with the 5-4 thing, so just know I'm gonna like screw you, but I'm also, but I'm gonna have kids with a taller woman. I hope you can understand. She doesn't even want to date you. You will never get to that point. You will never get married. You will never do the do. You never, ne never go bump in the night. You will never have kids. You will not do any of those things with her. Why are you trying to plan for the future? Why are you trying to inform her of these things that she is never going to partake in. You are crazy, my friend. Probably use VR to pretend it's you to make you less jealous. What? Let's start a new page in our book. Let's fill the pages with nothing but love, understanding, and passion. By the way, stop posting our texts online, please. This is a private conversation between two adults. I think it's one adult and one fucking deranged lunatic psychopath that needs to be in a psych ward immediately. We don't need... I don't even know what the fuck that is. Third parties adding their worthless opinions. Oh, and that black t-shirt you wore at something barbecue? It was extremely hot seeing your pierced nipples poking through. Please, for the love of you, Manny, do that more. You're gonna stop texting me. Two, after that, you will delete my number and block. Three, you will stop harassing my friends. Four, you will stop contacting me on any platform. Failure to do any of the above will lead to consequences you're not prepared for. I will say it again. Stop texting me. Block my number. Stop contacting me on any platform. If you see me IRL walk in the other direction. Think hard about your next steps now because it will make a difference. I'm not fucking around. Oh my god, this girl's fucking awesome. She's a fucking badass. I just love it. She just doesn't even fucking entertain this motherfucker. Like, she, like, let it go on long enough just to get these text receipts for our enjoyment. But then at the end of it, she's like, alright, I'm gonna lay down the fucking scripture here, okay? This is what's gonna fucking happen. One, two, three, and four, you're done. That's it. I love that for her. That was an amazing conclusion to this. I hope she finds a really good guy. She seems really fucking cool. I think a lot of people like her. But anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Till next time.